doesn't connect it to the Wi-Fi, I don't seem to be able to bring it in. Oh, yeah, I do have a webpage account. Maybe it works. Let's go to the... You can have the trustees' minutes, and then just pull that so, out. Actually, uh, are you, you, you're wondering, like, what the specific work is? Yeah, but here, very well. Right, so I want you to approve it the way they do. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's, here's the thing with that, though. I wasn't at that meeting because I had some cold symptoms and I asked if we were listening to each other and stay home. So I was just doing it from a recording. And when they came around to it, it was really vague. Like they agreed to add what Doug wanted, but they didn't give specific wording. So, I mean, I guess I would just. So you haven't typed it up yet? Yeah. Right. I haven't typed up the change because I. I've, okay. When you have, can you. Also, send that out to the select board and we'll pick it up at a pick it up when you get it. Okay, sure. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry. I did read it in the world, but you did send it to us. Very much. At the status report? Yes, at the minute. Well, I did read those figures. We'll just wait for the thing. Excuse me, Mr. Jones. Um, total spent to date is at 65%. Is that what you're looking for? Or so don't go from Vermont, which is at the college or the university. Now the board has to approve their third class circuit license, which the town gets no fee for. They get thousand ninety five dollars. That sounds fair, Dan. <laughs> And Matt, I don't remember who pulled him on. Uh, Dan and Rich were. Uh, I didn't see if Matt connected also. That's where all the like buckets from. Okay. And I've got Buttermount Mountain Travel. Dollar General. You should. Oh, back in. Sherwood Market. Okay, what's board pleasure? You want to take these up individually or throw the slate as presented with conditions or is it all the same? There's nobody new in there. Nobody new. And I'm, I'm still missing the two restaurants for our downtown and the restaurant. They have nothing to do with them. And no changes from the previous years. Second. Full slate? Yeah. With stipulations or conditions? Our normal usual letter. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor, see what I'm saying on it. Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Uh, next item. Did you want to give any kind of a. Why don't you give a room before and also. Tell us what's going on with Brian and yeah. what we're looking into. Uh, so our roads are, you know, we're, we're entering into what's probably going to be a pretty intense mud season this year. Um, you know, we've had a few, we've had roads breaking up in a few spots. Uh, guys have been out working on it. Um, you know, we're kind of doing our best. Uh, we're working with folks on vehicle permits. Uh, and you know, trying to keep people off the roads when they're soft, uh, conducting loads early in the morning while it's still frozen. Um, it's going, all that's going pretty well, but yeah, it's going to be a pretty expensive spring. Um, we're managing overtime, but we're, we're we spent quite a bit on it. Uh, I think that we're going to be okay for the. Uh, staying under our limit to the end of the year, but we're going to be up right around our limit. Um, Brian Krause got back, I think it was yesterday, 
from his vacation uh, that he had spent up in Washington State. Uh, so he is coming back from an area that has a pretty high rate of infection. So we have asked him to work from home for the rest of this week uh, and kind of monitor the situation. So it's not going to be you know, a full two weeks, but we can't really spare him very much for uh, kind of that long uh, is vacation and now an extra week out of uh, service. And, uh, Stay away from him. You know, we have to trust that somebody yeah, knows where he's been and his yeah. exposure. Yeah. And we're conducting this only a week. Extra seven days of uh, uh, precaution, you know, the self isolation for, you know, next week. Uh, the tests are only available for folks who are symptomatic. Yes, he came home yesterday. So if we see that he has symptoms, you know, if he experiences a fever or a cough or something like that, we'll obviously reevaluate uh, before we. Bring him back to work. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some suggestions for how to handle this in the workplace uh, when we get into broader discussion about virus response. But um, I think for right now, uh, barring any particular cause for concern, an extra week of isolation is sufficient. Um, it carries a little bit of risk with it. I think that it's a manageable level of risk. I had a question about blood season. Are the areas that are really bad places that we've done in mitigation, or are they in I would have to ask what, in particular, we've done at those locations. I'm, I'm not sure what abatement measures we've attempted to take in prior years. Right now, um, you phone them. It is, right now we're doing just repairs and, and yeah. the kind of future efforts to uh, prevent the, the, the same spot from breaking up in the future. Uh, this, I think part of the reason this has been an especially bad year was that we had a lot of rain uh, just before winter setting. So the ground was pretty well saturated uh, once it got cold. So it held a lot of water in the road surface and in the uh, in the, the kind of first couple feet of, of the ground when it froze, uh, which that theory also helps explain why we've had quite so much for frost seeds and other things on paved sections too. Were you raising your hand? Okay. Okay. Um, is that about it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, Charlie, congratulations. No? It should have been double. You said, oh, you're right. It was double. Yes, I'm So. As you were earlier, I was the chairman, and Kim was the vice chairman. He was supposed to talk to Donna, but gave him a quarter for a minute. Yeah, he said, I need on my when I'm busy, but I need to be able to work a little bit over to We have a backup recording device. Thank you. Okay. Everything. iPhone. Yeah, I got an answer to my English a little bit. Also, I tried that one time pretty well. Um, I jumped. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so, if we, um, we finished the class for a little bit before you had that. And uh, so we're looking for something to do. My understanding is you want us to look at sewer and water extension, for which we need a lot. I guess you know, I don't know much about the building, but well, I'm afraid to take the money because it's the most dangerous. I assume that's what you want us to look at. That's one of the things that we thought about. One of the 
Our choice of plans and what's looking ahead is coming. Do we want it? Do we care? And uh, we do not have a uh, bylaws, my knowledge. The planning commission doesn't have bylaws, which I think is a primary distraction. So that would be something we're supposed to do. But, you know, in terms of actually getting something done in the sewer, yeah. Um, Mike, so I understand. My understanding is that our sewer, the town's sewer allocation, runs out at a certain point. Is that correct? It's a little bit unclear if the Town's allocation runs out, or if it's the entire agreement about the service area runs out. There will be, it, it is also unclear what happens if either one runs out. Um, that an agreement between the town and village, uh, we've got two years before that happens, so an agreement be between the town and the village for a new service, a new service area agreement. Uh, can be completed before then. So um, I think before the planning commission gets too deep into it, it's worth having a conversation with the trustees collectively to ask if they're interested in extending that or if they're looking to not pursue such well, Actually, they brought it to us. They were interested. Um, Is that right? They, you know, in, in Walter's words, to the end of the town, basically, he wanted to go. Um, I'm not sure if the full board just yeah. yeah. But uh, so that that there is interest from them. It's sort of the where we want to see expansion and growth because wherever the sewer line goes, that could uh, stimulate certain growth. There may be areas where we don't want to see that growth. Okay, so, Maria, I didn't understand the the trustees weren't quite there, but here. Same. Well, uh, we, we have any members, but I don't think we're speaking. We have asked the plan. Okay. Me and Cash. So, yeah. Okay. I just want to get to the part of it. Yeah. So, uh, you appoint the members of the planning commission, the planning commission for both the town and the village. True. So, yes. I need to go and get anything else. Just. No, especially on a matter like this, it would be great. Yeah, I think they have since it's their boss. Yeah, yeah, and we don't want. Remember, right. it's just a plan. Right. It was just a plan. So. Yeah, it, it'll have to be adopted by both wards, but. Um, Why not be adopted by the owners? I the in the 2002 when the map were originally drawn and the agreement was originally reached, it was it had to be done through the planning commission, and there was a, a process for how to draw the maps. Uh, that was observed by the planning commission. So kind of recreating that in our update is uh, okay. improved, but we'll have to help. We have We've got a little bit of it. Uh, we're also probably gonna have to try and reach out to a couple of people who are around Lynn to fill in some gaps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to look at anything? As of right now, that was the, the direction and hope we had after the class four highway uh, policy was done. We would look at the uh, town wide sewer district. Is that cool with water or is water separate? Is sewer cool with water or is it separate? It's going to have to. And I believe we don't, water, have, water we don't have no water districts, and there are places the water goes out beyond the village limits. East Johnson, right? No, 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 no sewer. Oh, the sewer does, okay. But it's easier to move to the water district. Yeah. Okay. okay. May I ask a question? Yes, go ahead, Doug. Uh, uh, some of this is flies by me because I can't pick up everybody, but what is the ability of the village to, uh, if there is no town service area, sewer service area, to extend the sewer service area wherever they might choose in the town outside the village boundaries? 
Well, they'd still need town approval to go outside their own jurisdiction. I'm wondering if what they have in their charter about this. Uh, sure. So, yeah, the charter would only refer to the village orders. I thought we'd already looked into that. Well, we may have, but I don't recall what the answer was. Yeah. I, I recall what you're talking about specifically, Doug, but I would hesitate to uh, go off my memory on that, but I don't believe that it granted them complete ability to operate in inside town limits on village property. I want to say that that provision Again, go, I'm going just from memory, but I want to say that provision allowed them to work on village property within town limits without our involvement or approval. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that they could make new connections. Yeah. I, I'm certain that uh, the best solution, regardless of what power exists, it would be to cooperative for them and us. But I was just curious where the, what hands people were holding. Yep, I think that's probably the way it'll go. Okay. So they do have to bring it to the You and I were talking about getting together. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but you and I can get together this week and we'll go into a little bit more detail about uh, what I know and recall. Um, what yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't mind. I'll ask you to stay when we start talking about the coronavirus, because that may impact the communities and you. We got a memo today that we're not That was going to be a suggestion of mine to the select board, but they have not heard, or heard that or ruled. Oh, it's from down the Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a rubber stamp board, believe me. Uh, okay, the next, unless you got anything else, or anybody's got any questions for Charlie, and again, congratulations. Uh, first item is the, it was going to be a formal request, request for the ATV group on the, having access to the village. Uh, because of our current restraint on no more than 10 people to a gathering, and my fear that there would be over 10 if they attended, I asked them to, uh, if they wouldn't mind not coming tonight, and I would ask a board member to make a motion to uh, suspend this for a future meeting discussion, and that way we could give everybody an opportunity to be here. So, Mr. Chairman. So we have a motion. Uh, before we table the entire discussion from them, we do have requests to continue their use of the uh, light industrial park, the Jewett property, uh, to connect to their trails to uh, which would be a motion, motion, which has nothing to do with this. No. So let's um, get this one off table, and then we'll just take that one up. That their request basically is to what they currently have. If we would just uh, make sense. Yeah. So there is a motion on the table to table or move this to a future meeting. Do we have a second? Motion second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. And now I would entertain a motion to authorize the club to for an existing. A, uh, an agreement that's the same as their existing one. So, we have a second. Does it need to be more specific though? Uh, we could make it more specific. You could name the property, but this is the only town property that we grant them use of. So, that's good. Second. Are you familiar with which property is? Okay. Is the rest of the board? Just Joe. Yes, true. This is just a 
they're using town property to get access to uh, jobs. No, I understand that, but it's in town property. Yeah. Right. But those are by ordinance. We authorize that. Yes. I don't understand. We're saying it's the only property. Oh, by ordinance, they already have access to property. Yeah, it is the only property that isn't covered by our ordinance, our existing ordinance. Um, any complaints or damage done to our property from last year? Any? Not that I'm aware of. Um, you know, I know that a couple neighbors, I believe on Hoag Road, have complained that uh, they were occasionally running late or a little bit loud. Um, but that was on class four roads, that wasn't. Okay, but on our property, things seem to be. Uh, I don't have any complaints about okay. about our property. On the Jewett property, do they actually have trails? Or did, did they just... Is that they, actually actually trails? they went around the perimeter, just using our property to get from their trails to Jolly's. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say by saying aye. 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 Motion has it. Carries. Uh, the second item is reference to the. Uh, where do I sign it? Um, middle on bottom. Rona Baez. Rosemary can sign as a witness. I would just like to say that uh, I'm very happy that all of you are here tonight. I think this is a, a great board. I'm very proud of this board. And uh, I want you all to stay safe and be healthy because uh, we have a town to run. And beyond that, we have employees that we need to uh, keep them healthy so that we can provide the continuation of services. We met as a core group of a few, uh, looking at ways that we can uh, at least uh, minimize the exposure of our employees to catching the virus, as well as uh, we have to be healthy so that we can help our community. And uh, I think this is a time for leadership that none of us could have ever in vision when we were running for select board. Um, and I'm really glad that I have a board that who it is now and the seriousness that you guys all put into this. So thank you. Thank you. On the virus, so like I said, what I've done is set up a core team uh, consisting of, uh, of course, typically the, the uh, Emergency Management Coordinator, which is Gordy, as well as Nat, he's the new one, uh, Brian and Meredith and myself, and uh, Scott Myers offered up his uh, assistance and I quickly accepted it and appreciate his help. He has a background in this. Um, you know, Gordy and I have got years and years experience with conventional types of emergencies that we dealt with, and this is not conventional by any means. Uh, we can't even see where it is. Uh, but Scott did have uh, experience in that, working in the state with health department, so it's a real asset to have him. Some of the things that we're looking at is, uh, and I want to mirror what the trustees have done. Uh, we want employees who are not feeling well to not come in. And yet, at the same time, we don't want to punish, penalize them for it. And we're looking at really modified schedules to reduce the amount of workforce here at the same time so that there's not much overlap. And at least if one person gets sick, it may only affect half of your department instead of the whole department being out. We have some mutual aid available for things like the, uh, the highway or the electric uh, employees from the village or the fire department, those all have uh, 
mutual aid agreements, but realizing that if our crew was taken out, they're probably having the same kind of struggles. What really has been concerning to all of us is the staff here. They are the ones that uh, have the most face time in the public and the biggest opportunity for catching it. Um, they've done some, oh, quite a few mitigations. They close the window. Uh, they're not directly basically breathing on each other as they're dealing with the public. They've got the door shut, so only authorized people were coming in. And all of these things, well and good, but we've gotten to another step now, another notch. And uh, consultation with Rosemary, and she's gotten word on Cambridge and Fletcher, both the towns. There's many, many. And there's many more. The, the town municipal offices are uh, closing it to public. Will be uh, open. We'll take phone calls, emails, uh, etc. But as far as being open to the public, it'll be closed. And as of effective tomorrow, that's what we're going to do here in Johnson. And researchers by appointment only. And researchers by appointment only. We are looking at all groups that are using these spaces up here, uh, canceling them. We had thoughts, and that's why I'm asking the select board of directing all of our committees, boards, commissions, unless they have imminent need to meet, that they suspend meeting. If it's, like I'm going to use the planning commission as an example, most of their items are not time sensitive, that one or two months is probably not going to impact it. Tuesday night live, it might because they need to prepare for this summer. Uh, so it'd be a case by case basis. Certainly would want to minimize any of those meetings and maybe they can do a lot of it with teleconferencing or what have you. I would also like to ask the board to consider declaring a state of emergency. It certainly gives me a certain level of uh, of authenticity or authorization as far as with the emergency management director position, as well as opening up the $1,000 from the emergency management reserve fund, if, if for any reason it was required. I don't really anticipate it is, but uh, there is just powers that do come with that declaration. But I would like to uh, open it up discussion some of my thoughts and I've shared these with emails is that we would suspend our working meetings so it would be less opportunity for not only us to intermingle as well as getting the public in here but also maybe looking at our regular meeting agenda and taking up only the must-dos and other things that can wait maybe just not take them up. I know there's a lot of things going on and it's it's changing hourly. Um, so the directions we go and how we, uh, things that may happen are probably going to change from even by tomorrow. Um, but anyways, I guess I'm looking for input from the board, what your thoughts are. This is our time to we're going to be the leaders in the community, and, and uh, I know the community is starting to look to us on um, where we're going and what we're doing, how we're preparing. Two things I've heard done. Yeah. Not in order of importance, but one motion I would want us to make tonight is to extend our dog license. Um, what is it? Late fees. What oh, should be waiting for? The June. April. April. No fees. Okay. So I'm making that motion. No fees for dog licenses for the last year. Any for any late fees until May 1st. So I have a motion and a second on delaying. 
dog license fees from April, or late fees from April 1st to May 1st. So this is any late fees for anything that the dog license? Uh, this is dog license. license. Then yeah, they're due April 1st. And there's been several um we close the happening. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? A little what Greg is mumbling back here about. <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, seem to say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye, seven. Uh, and please, any, I feel that I mean, uh, I'd like to um, mirror what the village trustees have done with employees with the intent that um, if they're feeling ill enough that they um, feel no pressure to come in, in fact, are encouraged not to come in, to stay home and uh, isolated. Um, and the staff have been wrong, but there was no there was no actual motion taken in the meeting minutes by the village. I'd like to make one though. But so but the, the idea is that for village employees, they can take sick time without depleting their CPO right to CPA. And they would be paid here. So there would be no incentive to come in. So I'd like to do the same for town. I think I would word that the motion is that any town employee feel like feel like symptoms. They take sick time without completing their sick sick banks or PTO banks now until the end of April and possibly to extend that if they need to. Is that kind of really match what the village has done? Yeah, and I think that's really critical to make sure there's no accident town village employees and figure out what you might be about across the field. Do you feel that that pretty much echoes? That would include reduced hours for central changes. I think that would be a separate. Separate. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that would cover it, but I think it does. I think that's probably going to get here. I guess I'm just wondering if you know any employees feel really like symptoms, like what if it is someone in their family seems to be. Or something like that. I just if it covers every case Excuse me, Eric. Uh, we cannot hear you guys. Could you please speak up? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we'll try. No, it was Thank good you. for the first half and then it dropped off very recently. So it's it's okay. it dropped off very recently. Just try to speak up. Something's happened. They said they. Somebody said, I think it was Dan, that they could hear us in the beginning. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's because Dawn was talking to me in the computer. She... Oh, yeah. It's pretty easy so we're just talking about extending it to family members. I, I, I would extend that to family members, uh, people who live in the household. You guys are meeting tonight. Tomorrow. 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 Yeah. yeah. You know, that would be consistent with what CDC and health We got Scott Myers in the background, and he's we're just comparing, make sure we're on track with the trustees. That could possibly be a potential nobody coming. Well, are we encouraging employees to work remotely? Is that if they can, but there's not a lot of our employees that can do a lot of their work remotely. Like Brian Krause is able to do some work remotely, uh -huh. uh, but not the majority of his work. Uh, with him coming back from vacation, he's got a certain backlog of right. office work and paperwork to do. So he's going to be good for things to do for you know a week or so. And maybe he could spend a little bit more time, but not. Uh, I guess I'm thinking you or Rosemary or. Uh, I yeah. Lisa's doing a good job of being able to work from home. And uh, Lisa's. Her work and uh, the work she's been able to do with online with Sports Engine and other things that, that that's well suited. She's got a lot of work that she can do remotely. I can do some work remotely, and uh, when we talk about modified schedules, 
I'm going to be modifying my schedule to do some work from home. Um, and basically, you are going to be the opposite of Meredith. Too. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm Meredith, and I are both going to be doing some work from home, and we're going to kind of work opposite schedules so that if something happens, one of us there is some staff, administrative staff besides Rosemary uh, mm -hmm. available. Now, are you going to qualify that a little bit about feeling ill? Because the two major symptoms are the sore throat and running a temperature. You know, you could be feeling ill in some other situation, which would be not even uh, tied to the coronavirus. So just saying, if you don't feel good, don't come in. I mean, if you had a sore throat and running a temperature, do not come in because that's the main two things right there. Scott, did you have something? Yeah, the, the CDC has, you know, really good guidance on this whole topic. And we shouldn't be following up what they created for all the parties in the back of the group they were doing. It's going to take a little bit of work on the edge. We can't hear you. That's too loud. That may be for just ideology and all that kind of thing. There's got to be a little bit of, you know, populist thing to this. And as far as family member, if they're so isolated, you really need to know that. Folks, we can't hear you. Yeah, Scott Myers is sharing some of the CDC guidelines, and I'm sorry you're unable to hear it up here in the front. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is really important that, and that you guys, like, you know, from my position in the schools, when we have employees who've been exposed, call the Vermont Department of Health and let the experts tell you when a person should be quarantined and when they shouldn't. You know, like 14 days for someone from an area of infected people seems to be the standard. Uh, it doesn't really matter how important they are. It seems super important. But rather than trying to play doctor, you guys should call the Vermont Department of Health and get recommendations on all your employees for their, their travel. And their this isn't to that level. This is only somebody's not feeling well. We don't even want them to come into work that day. They may feel fine the next day. This isn't when they've gone to a doctor and they've been told to self-quarantine. That's a whole that's a whole other level. Who's speaking? Uh, so basically you have a motion that they would be held harmless if they're not feeling well and they want to they shouldn't be coming into work for a day or two or, or a family member's home. Paraphrasing what you said. Did we have a second to that motion? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? I'm in favor of the heightened sensitivity of people given I'd rather people be wrong than than uh, and not come in than be right. I don't think we'll find it being abused. I sort of share that as well, Doug. I, I think all the employees realize that somebody is a, they have a role here, a function, and, and in the society, and they would want to make sure that the gut town and village are able to fulfill their roles, and they would not abuse this. I, I really think our employees you know, are very conscious, conscientious of this. Okay, any other discussion? Just a point of clarification too, like doctor, anybody wants to play doctor, and folks who are feeling symptomatic, they're not to call the health department. They have to call their primary health care physician and then work through the motions and then help, which is usually done by the primary health. I think that's the last bit of information I saw from the health department. Especially for testing, potential testing. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Your next motion. 
Um, I don't know where that leaves our uh, public work supervisor with his isolation quarantine. We can seek some additional guidance on that. Um, you know, that we don't have. I mean, in terms of this page, time off. Um, well, he got, today would be the first day that he would have returned to work. Sorry. We can find him in this health harmless for. I think. And he's salaried an employee, so. Yeah. Well, but, but he is. Is he drawing down on his. Uh, CTO time while he's while we've asked him to stay out of work. I would take from his motion that's the no, and that was the vote of the board. Um, so deal with the employee schedules. Employee schedules. Yeah, I don't have a motion for that. A motion for that. So what? Uh, well, basically, what we're looking at is asking uh, Rosemary and the department heads. Be creative on how could you split your your department up so that you know maybe uh, instead of working eight hour shifts they work work ten hour shifts and, and yet they never cross over the same work at the same time. The, the thought here is uh, if one of them gets sick, it only takes out half your crew and not your whole crew, and just mitigating as much as we can separating people. The problem is, uh, you know, are we always going to get 40 hours in with them? Maybe not. Um, are we still going to pay them, make them whole as far as pay, but just ask them to work these odd hours and combinations and such? But we need some, we need some flexibility on that. We really near going to be blindly giving it to Brian Krause to come up with a schedule that works in his department, which is probably going to be completely different than what Rosemary has. Um, I think Rosemary and Susan are going to try to always be opposite, not both of them in here at the same time, because if Rosemary's out and Susan's out, there's nobody to sign the check, and the town comes to a screeching halt without checks signed. Well, you know, who's going to pay the bills? <laughs> 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 so the concern is that we're going to be asking the employees to do a lot of maybe uh, funky things for the next month or so. And, and yet, with these funky things that we're asking them, they may not come up to 40 hours, it might be 36. Are we just going to make them whole at least? And that would be a special, uh, this is a special time, special uh, thing that we're dealing with, but um, we've never done anything like this before. I guess I would look for some kind of a motion if somebody could craft that would cover these employees, and make sure that they're paid like a salaried employee, even though they may not work necessarily 40 hours. And how do we do that? I don't have a specific motion in mind, but that is, that is what I've spoken to Brian Krause, and that is what we're seeking for this is that, um, you know, talking to folks about solutions for uh, preventing the spread of virus throughout our departments. Uh, we think that this is something that we kind of need for that. Yeah, so that we don't have, we aren't taken down by uh, you know, one person getting sick. But if we're going to do that, it's going to be difficult. It could be difficult for us to get everybody in at 40 hours a week. Uh, and we don't have enough time yet to know what, to have a proposal of what the schedule is going to look like. Uh, so we need to basically move to give authority to supervisors to come up with a schedule they feel is safe and appropriate. Um, creative scheduling. Creative scheduling. However, employees all. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what those hour totals come to, uh, they will be 
meaningful. And our intention is, like Eric said, like the difference between like 36 hours and 40 hours. It's right. not going to be, right. you know, we're bringing people in 20 hours and paying them 40. Right. Um, it's and it to be make up a little bit of a difference because, you know, it also might work out that, you know, maybe we can have half of our crew do a true 40 hours and then the other half can't quite do 40 hours every week. Um, you know, we can swap them back and forth week to week, but you know that would still really affect the people's pay. Mm -hmm. so the highway department it probably will not even be an issue because right. they're going to have weekends they're going to be working, so they'll probably get their 40 hours. Um, I'm thinking more probably in the office, and we're mirroring, mirroring, mirroring mm -hmm. <laughs> it's what the village is trying to do as well. Mm -hmm. Charlie? No. Okay. What did, Dan, what did Charlie, ask? Charlie asked if any employees were covered by the collective bargaining yet. I see. Okay, thank you. Because then you couldn't make yeah. right. That's why we declared a state of emergency, so we could have. Well, um, why don't you just make everyone celebrate until the first of May? Not necessarily, not necessarily. If they're salaried and not the not exempt, they still get overtime. Really clear. But there but there are conditions that we can make for an employee to be made exempt. Right. Is. So they're going to be not they're going to be salaried non-exempt. Okay. So they still get overtime. They don't meet the they don't meet the labor definition of not exempt. Not exempt. Forty thousand dollars a year. That's one of the requirements. You know, it could be set up. If one week they work thirty-five hours, the next week they work more, and it's all an act. Just keep track of your hours. They could end up or having to work overtime in serious emergency coming in. And, you know, they could be working on Saturday for four hours. Yeah. You know, yeah. so just keeping track of hours, it's all going to wash out probably. Yes, they could end up having to work a Saturday. They're going to end up with it for you. Yeah. You don't know. And I, I certainly believe that for the hiking department. Lots of places work, you know, 30 hours this week and 42 hours. You know, they, yeah. they don't work a normal 40-hour week, but they end up over a two or three-week period. The highway department's going to get the 40 hours. That's People can also get the overtime. And I'm talking about if you're know, worried about your office staff and stuff. But frankly, I don't see how they're going to work more than 30 hours a week, but I would make them salary until the end of April. I don't think overtime for them is an issue. I think it's getting up to 40 is an issue. I'm not sure what the ramifications are of just. Declaring somebody's salary is not salary. Uh, it might be cleaner just yeah. one way we've been going. So, does anybody, uh, Doug, you ready to uh, craft a motion? <laughs> no, it's hard to. Well, I, I, I'm generally in favor of that. I, I, I think it's more important that we get their cooperation or asking them to alter their schedule. I'm not so concerned about. The total number of hours that are reaching that is that we is that we are maintaining our our best possible potential for serving the public during this this crisis. So I'm in favor of uh, you know paying people for 40 hours and uh, scheduling as best we're able to uh, to uh, maintain a. Uh, uh, as secure working staff as we can for their health and the, the community's betterment. Okay, I see Nat's crafting a motion now while he's working on that. Uh, the other thoughts of asking or directing the committees, boards, commissions of the town to suspend any unnecessary meetings, unless if they got time sensitive items they gotta deal with. I guess I would look for the board. 
Do we so move that? Do we want to put a, a, a date on that or just till? Yeah, I, I'm guessing it's going to be at least a month, but right. you know, we just. I would say until terminated, you know, until so we lift it. Until we lift it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a motion to suspend all town committee boards, commissions, meetings until further notice. We have a second. Can we add a modifier for, uh, you know, if they have time sensitive things, they can ap apply to Rosemary or myself for an exemption? Is that a friendly amendment? Yes. Yeah. Donna, you've got something? How that's worded? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, we got a motion to second. We got Greg wants to speak. The basis to suspend an in person, the intent is to suspend in person, but the, like I said, I imagine might so for those time sensitive matters, people will get together and uh, some virtual meeting options. I just, I'm just curious if the intent is. Just the in person. Well, with so, open meeting, we really have yeah. to have public meeting. Yeah, there, there are no exemptions to the open meeting law, which requires a physical space, a designated physical space where people can participate. Um, so we would essentially have to open this for people to attend. You can attend and participate in the meeting remotely. Um, the, the option, there has to be a space for the public to go to, uh, to participate. And so we would have to open the space and we would have to have something, you know, our, our Zoom meeting is one kind of test of how does this work. Um, you know, and we'll gather some feedback on that and this is, uh, uh, you know, we, we were kind of, Aware that it would have a hard time getting the whole room, uh, but we'll get a little bit of feedback on it afterwards. But uh, the legislature, in their infinite wisdom, did not allow for any exception exceptions except for themselves. Right, Dan? His <laughs> <laughs> names up there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Washington. It is out in places if it's a state of emergency. Yes. Yeah. 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 There is no, no, no exemption. Oh. For the most part, probably no. Can be, yeah. Hey, I did get I did get some guidance, yeah, and you did modify your motion to indicate those that have time sensitive things they have to deal with. They obviously can meet, but we would certainly hope they uh, try to uh, reduce the amount of time and keep spread out. Uh, we had motion. We had the second from Doug. Any other discussion on that one? All those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? I'm going to take a swing with this on you, ready? Move that we uh, authorize um, Brian and Rosemary to create schedules to meet the needs of the town, uh, work schedules to meet, meet, uh, meet the needs of the town while we mitigating risk of spreading the virus, and should that require restricted hours beyond the employee's control, the town will compensate for 40 hours. Does that cut it? Does that cover it? I, so it's it's not good to me. Add Brian Krause to that. Add Brian Krause, or Brian Krause, Brian Krause, and Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the only person I directly, I mean, Directly oversee and work on schedules with is Lisa, and okay. she's taking care of it. I don't have to change her schedule. So, the friendly amendment? Uh, I don't think it was seconded, so that's part of my motion. Okay. And so, also, or? Yeah. Sorry. Motion is second. Did you hear that, Doug? I did. Okay. Any discussion? No. <laughs> Doug said no. All those in favor, signify saying yes. Those <laughs> uh, opposed? Really laughing matter, but so a couple of other things I'd like to. Uh, I'm sorry, 
Well, the only other thing I was, it's uh, with this, the coronavirus, is the board uh, willing to declare a state of emergency? With a data, Johnson? Yeah. So moved. <laughs> no, it's not going to long. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to declare a state of emergency for the town of Johnson. For the town of Johnson. Any other discussion? All those in favor, sing by saying aye. Aye. All right. Those, those opposed. And for everyone's awareness, we have set up a website on the town's website, a page that deals uh, exclusively with the COVID-19 COVID uh, uh, Did you have something further on that? Yeah, I'd just like to request, I don't know if you made a motion, but until, um, for as long as we're dealing with this, if we could keep uh, uh, Zoom as an option for people to participate in these meetings. And, uh, we'll, we'll get some feedback and see how successful it was, and, but I expect I think this or something like it. It's a really good tool. Um, Did you get my emails about the yes. seminar? Yes. Okay, good. I think those would be really Yeah, I, I think that would help out a lot. Greg, you had something? Without just a couple of three points, but what are the implications of town declaring state of emergency? Mostly, it just it gives me a sense of uh, as the EMD of a certain level of authority, and uh, uh, you know, I have the select board's backing. But also, there's a thousand dollars that the EMD is able to have access to from the emergency management fund. Not in this particular situation do I anticipate needing it, but there's certain things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. thank you. And you know, that little bit of uh, that I'm there because it's, the town is authorized, the select board is authorized. So, for um, a lot of people are going to be asking about um, volunteering, helping out neighbors, um, food security, a lot. Of um, for children and, and elders, um, the the governor has mandated that the school boards and school districts take the lead and continue to provide food service for school children. Um, and I actually thanked Mark Nelson on that to ask him. Um, so there's that. We also um, have not started, but we're going to try and reach out to. Capso and some other um, organizations um, to help us coordinate volunteer energy. For the time being, people interested in volunteering are to um, email Brian, um, T O, are you T O J? T O J administrator at townofjohnson.com. T O J administrator. Um, and it's also on the if you go to the town of Johnson webpage, one of the headings is now COVID-19 and uh, my email address and volunteer opportunities are listed there. So for now, we're just collecting names, getting people to, you know, if they're interested to, to email Brian and say that they're interested and um, Greg, I'll be that we can connect with you and to see what capstone you want to be in this. Um, that if you want to see what we do, capstone is all organizations right now are going going through a process to determine how to continue to provide essential services and also maybe issues related to uh, the virus. So essentially, I think what you're going to see across the board, um, as I'm going to call this afternoon, a variety of other nonprofits in the community that folks are essentially locking their doors and, and really converting to phone communication, um, setting up drop boxes, and just really trying to limit any kind of uh, physical contact, but still provide services and of course, Capstone's focus is you know, fuel assistance, housing supports, um, and so trying to make sure that people still have access to those programs and resources, especially when other resources might be um, limited. Um, then the other shift is really about how can we respond to the more global impact, so beyond folks that are currently connected to our programs. So that's um, the, the areas of, of focus there around housing, especially for you know, our uh, population of folks in the community who 
are experiencing homelessness right now. Um, as you can imagine, the shelter in Hyde Park is very concerned about the kind of outbreak there and what that might mean. So there are some conversations and searching for alternate sites that could be used, not necessarily for the folks who have contracted the virus, but that maybe folks who have virus can stay at the shelter, but then we can access the other locations as, as options. Um, food, which was had come up earlier, we're very glad to see our school partners are um, pointed, are working to make sure that kids uh, are, are getting food. But we know there are a whole host of other people who in the community might not get food. So right now, the initial focus is trying to make sure that families connected with Capstone have food options and systems been developed um, to make sure that that's happening on a weekly basis. But we're preparing that if necessary that we expand that. There's a commercial kitchen um, over in Capstone. Um, and then the other piece is just coordinating with a variety of other partners. The faith community has really stepped up in a wonderful way with offers of um, financial contributions, food, and then people power. And so um, tomorrow I'll be talking to the folks at RSVP, a um, group that does coordinate some volunteer initiatives, but really like because this is a special case and because it might have much broader impacts than any of us can imagine, that they may need some support. So Capstone is um, offering to, to be a resource at the county level in terms of coordinating both um, volunteer people who are looking to volunteer, but also the needs that might come in. We're hoping that it will also have the added benefit that we can let people know about some of the other resources that are available to Capstone um, to address some of the financial concerns. Uh, one of the specific offers that's come from the faith partners is to create a fund that would uh, provide some uh, some uh, resources for people who, who have experienced a loss of income um, with work shutdowns or slowdowns, which seem to be pretty eminent at this point if they haven't already happened. So, um, so there'll be more information to come. There's a lot of scrambling right now to just address the core functions in a lot of the different organizations. But uh, at the same time, there have been a lot of conversations around how do we respond to the broader community needs? So that's a very long-winded way of saying yes. Matt, that uh, we want to uh, be an active partner in addressing the community needs, which is important. Thank you. Yeah. So, so and um, I, I did speak to uh, Eric earlier and spoke to Dave Yakovani. Who was talking. I hear Dan Noyes is on one of the lines somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. So the, I guess the question is trying to figure out how to coordinate similar functions and support. So, Brian, if you're doing that at the town level, trying to figure out how we coordinate at the county level so that we're not stepping on each other's yeah. toes. We, I, I don't see any use, any way that we're going to really be able to put people to work. Uh, what we can do, though, is help coordinate and put people in touch with each other. Okay. You know, so that. You've got things that you need volunteers for. I, I've got people who want to volunteer for action. So I can, I can help put that together. But um, yeah, I think that's kind of our, our role in this is just making connections. Okay. So if you want, I, I, if the board's okay, I have to work with Brian and we can coordinate just how to get the resources and the needs uh, connected. And, uh, and again, with the hope that if there are other needs, if let's say someone's you know a little bit behind on their electric bill, we can let them know about the uh, assistance program that we have that can help them address that. So there are some other resources that we can let people know about. And, and again, if this pool of funds comes through, it would be a resource that would be available to anybody in the community and folks who might not otherwise contact Capstone. Yeah, one of the things I'm thinking about is. Um, yeah, outreach so that people know where to go and have support, particularly for um, older folks who aren't online and maybe, you know, what they do is they, they read the newspaper, but they're not on the internet or, you know, um, reading our minutes or whatnot. So I think outreach is going to be a huge piece of that. And how can we as a board and, you know, community leaders really get the word out in a variety of ways? Um, so that's something I'm thinking about. Um, and also, um, I'm sure, 
that is speaking to Neil on Wheels mm -hmm. and all those folks that, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, there's some cool, fortunately we have some coalitions already in the community. There's a hunger coalition, there's a housing homelessness yeah. coalition. The, the, the right now it's trying to get those you know, groups to, there's some of the day-to-day -day needs that are still going on and now it's asking folks to do some of this crisis um, planning. But that those conversations have begun. Um, I reached out to both those coalitions today. Um, so we're, we're trying to get those groups together to figure out what, what can they do um, on this community-wide level and also figure out how do we get the word out? Because we feel like everyone's willing to jump in and the yeah. response has been amazing already. Um, the fact that you all have for addressing this tonight is it's incredible. The communication is going to be the challenge because there's so many tools these days. Yeah. I feel like it's harder to get messages out. But um, one of the connections we'll be talking to Roland, LaJoy, and getting things on the radio. He's been amazing to support. And then um, working with the papers to get information out. So mm -hmm. you bring up a really good point, Kyle. Kind of make sure that everybody gets the word, mm -hmm. um, not just. Because it's usually the you know the vulnerable people in our community that don't get the word. <laughs> so and now our kids yeah. aren't going to school. Exactly. That cuts off the communication exactly. channel. So. Do you know anything about child care? About how they're helping people that are trying to go to work and don't have a place like for their kids. There's stuff. something that was the governor was talking about. There. But I don't think anything set in stone. No, no yeah, they're looking into that. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping Dan can maybe brief us on. Um, uh, help available to small businesses and folks that are losing income, like the child care piece, restaurants, I heard just are now forced to close at 2, p at 2 p.m. starting tomorrow. So he, I think he can, he said he'd be willing to fill us in on. Dan, can you hear these conversations? Are you on mute, Cass? Yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, I guess meals on. Hold on, Dan. I'm going to try and turn you up a little. All right. Right on. So um, I was listening to Greg. Uh, meals on Wheels has got some stuff going on and, um, you know, trying to coordinate uh, deliveries and then telephone call ins. And I can. Um, connect with Brian on that. And then Greg was talking about, so I'll, meet, I'll, I'll connect with Greg as well on that. Um, but in terms of small business, uh, there was a meeting today that they put out a, um, a press release where SBA, uh, people would register with the SBA. Um, I sent some links out on Facebook on that, and I'd be glad to make sure that they get out to Brian so they can get put out there, but I'm sure this, you know, the state will be putting them out. Um, so it's just want to make sure that people know that I'm, I'm available and, and, uh, Matt and Rich, I'm sure also if stuff comes up where we're, we're needed, uh, or concerns with how the state's dealing with this, please let us know and, uh, we'll, we'll do our best to deal with it. But stuff changes really fast. It's like, I've been on conference calls all day and stuff they were saying this morning changed this afternoon. So, um, yeah, but in terms of volunteers, I'm, I'm in, I'm in on it. So let's see what we can do to make sure that people that need help get help. So, uh, it, can anybody hear me right now? Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Okay, so this is uh, Matt Hill, uh, representative. So um, what we have initially done, building off of Dan's statements, is, uh, you know, we're, we're really trying to make sure that uh, people who have to lay off uh, employees will be set um, as far as their employees will, will get unemployment insurance benefits and the employers will not get penalized for that. Um, so, it, 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 like Dan said, it's a moving target, and we're really trying to help out people as we can get them. Um, and the federal government has been making moves to make sure that uh, people are made whole. Um, but here in the state, we have already you know, tried to make sure that employees will be better off and to make sure that their bills hopefully can be paid with the unemployment insurance benefits. Um, so if, if your business is, uh, you know, seeing a decreased amount of, uh, income coming in, 
do, do not be afraid of your unemployment insurance, uh, you know, penalty. Just let them go and let them collect unemployment insurance benefits. The state will pick that up and, and the employer will not be penalized for those, uh, um, you know, for those shortages. Um, and, and, and that's just for starters. So the uh, Vermont Economic Development Authority is waiting in the line and we're, we, we are trying to line up people to hopefully get some more benefits, you know, and, 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 and some more assistance to people that, you know, are facing hardships because it's going to be a long ride. It's not going to be a simple, you know, a, a, a simple uh, one week and we're done. It's going to be a multi-week thing. So, you know, we're, we are trying hard and we really want to make sure that people are like set up and, and not going bankrupt, uh, you know, for this type of thing. And uh, I would just hope that uh, we can all kind of uh, spend our money locally and make sure that our neighbors are well taken care of. And hopefully uh, we will, you know, make it through this uh, together. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Scott, did you have something? Yeah, I brought this up earlier this morning regarding uh, volunteers. And uh, I think I was pushing pretty hard, and I think everybody else agreed that the use of volunteers through organizations would be the best thing to do because that way we could, we don't have the ability to vet everybody as a policy on a virus like this, um, which makes it really hard for single. You know, community members to help out because we don't want them to bring the disease potentially to our most vulnerable populations, which can be those of age. And we don't want them also to receive any kind of disease or who they're trying to help. So, going through an organization, I think, is really important because we do want to fix that. And with local volunteers who really want to help out. And there's a lot that goes behind trying to squelch one of the strength of this virus. And I worry that we may as well be the right thing, but also the right creating a higher risk for those individuals. So finding working volunteers who really want to help out in a remote type of way. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because I've seen a lot of drive people to the doctor's office. It's like, well, you know, you just broke your sick for a ball and your respiratory act gets just went out the window. So these, these, um, I think I sent the board a link to what other towns, Burlington, Montpelier, Essex, have successfully used these volunteer forms that where you, you know, you fill in information about yourself. Can we get that? On the website for people to fill in through the website, you look at them and then figure out where to send. Yeah, I think we can. That. We can put. What's that? I just asked Kyle to copy of that. Yeah, I think we can put up something like that, and, and right now it's just email me so I can place contact information. Yeah, but this would make your life easier. It, it certainly rather would. Rather than going back and forth twenty times saying, "Can I get your email?" Oh, now I need your phone number. I need this. It's all there, and then they can also say what they're interested in, if their skill set is, or whatever. You know, there's a bunch of pointed questions yeah. to help yeah. to help take some workload off you, and then to quickly get it to where they need to go. So for the volunteers, when you have an issue like this, you usually offer up all the recommendations, and there we have them posted for the workforce. And if you just simply put an so employee volunteer and put them in the same bucket. Mm -hmm. That will solve a lot of the problems because it talks about the symptomatic or the family member who's symptomatic or what happens if they're working to feel at The same thing, I mean, as a human being, it doesn't really matter what category we put ourselves in, whether we're volunteers or employees. So there is guidance available now under the employment. Okay. Just to keep it moving in the right direction. And everything from the step where it comes tonight is right on key for employees. It's re reviewed as a narrow what's easy as that. We're employing it. Yeah, you get everyone on the 
managers are even more guided, so let's say let's not too easily close down. Right. And it's right on the web page. So and we could probably add a link to those forms on our web page. Yeah. We're trying to direct everyone to that web page. Uh -huh. We're going to have all the information, right, one stop shopping. If we can just somehow get the message out. Uh, to your point, we, we definitely need to uh, touch the radios, touch the, uh, the newspapers. Yeah. And I think we got a reporter in the room, so that might be happening. I don't know. Yes. 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 <laughs> So the update with the school and the kids um, getting fed, just before this meeting, we had a robocall come through from David Manning. They are keeping their kitchen open. Mm -hmm. So um, the people that uh, you know do breakfast and lunch and snacks, they're going to continue to make that food. And, um, and then the bus route will be dropping off food at those children's homes, like literally like put it in the driveway and then drive off. So it seems like they're making good moves and choices uh, to help to help get um, the kids fed. So there's a lot of food insecurity in Johnstown. Yeah, that I haven't heard how they're gonna solve that. But I know that's a that's a concern. Not many families, but it, it's enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping to get an answer on that soon. I know uh, that the schools are ordered by the governor to continue those food serves yes. for those buildings that need it. Yes. So I guess I'm thinking about the same thing for our elders and our you know people that are on the edge already, and this is just going to put them over. So and I think I mean we don't have the resources to do these kind of things. You guys, you know, you're the nonprofits out there in the world do. If we can provide the list of volunteers and and they can help assist you guys to do those things, that's probably our biggest role. Yeah. 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 Wow. And I think we had some, some other successful uh, adventures in the community to build out some of the community meal at the United Church. Uh, it's a partnership, you know, it's food that's made up at NVU, yeah. brought down certain cities. I was thinking that they're not looking to bring folks together. We might be able to borrow uh, from the Elementary school playbook and the meals are, are, are made and then set outside for people to pick up or are delivered in some fashion. So I think we, you know, fortunately, some of these things we're not going to be starting from, from scratch. So and I think, as you mentioned, here, it is going to take some partnering too, because it seems like a daunting task. How do you feed a whole town or, you know, folks in town who, who don't have regular food sources? But when we start thinking about some of the different partners and, and, and that model with uh, uh, downtown was, was how the community you know, kind of got started before and the, mm -hmm. into the mix. So, again, I think we, yeah. we've, yeah. we've done it before. It's a little similar. Oh, and it's, yeah, it's a little more. What's happening with the food shop? Is it staying open? Is it closing? That's a good question. Unfortunately, most of the Volunteers over there, folks that could be part of a vulnerable population. I have got an email back. One of the questions we put out on was the, uh, what was that, the food securities? The food securities? Is that what they called it? I got an email back from the Monterey Management that uh, at this time all of the major Shaw's, Hanford, Price Chopper are all well stocked. They, they don't have any concern with being able to support the needs of the communities. However, the state you know, will be looking into being prepared if there was ever a need. This was like the job is talking about these nice market, 
and it sounded like she was only expecting about two thirds of what had been ordered for their delivery tomorrow. And that items that were just mentioned here, I talked about me tonight at Spring Market. Her delivery tomorrow is about two thirds of what she said she ordered. Uh, and uh, Price Chopper in, in Morrisville was supposed to have delivery of meat. It actually went to Shelburne. And so there, it's the, the meat section and Price Chopper is lights out right now. So I, I, I don't know if, uh, in terms of our, maybe as a, as a state, we're looking good, but if things are going to uh, Chittenden County and not landing here, um, you know, we should talk about that back. <laughs> <laughs> right, sure. They take all our food, we take all their garbage. Fair trade. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, the other piece I've been thinking about is um, so we've got physical health, we've got, you know, um, yeah, physical health in a variety of ways, but then we have mental health. And I'm, I'm, I don't know what, you know, how we can do to help. I think people need to be told you can go outside, your kids can go outdoors and yeah. play. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't mean they need to work. Right. And I, I think that people probably misunderstand that. You're quarantined, your kids can't go out with the back door to go. That's another radiation thing. And a part of this, you bring up a really good point, Doc, uh, because I think right now there's the sort of individual personal stress, especially if your income level is infected. That this you know global crisis is, is going to be concerning, scary right for everyone to a certain degree. Um, so raising awareness about mental health is really important. So thank you for um, folks who might be affected. This could be all of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, um, the call I was on earlier today, the Monroe County Mental Health and Behavioral Health and Wellness and Morris were both on there. And again, they have they have geared up to provide, make sure that they can still be a resource even if it's not in-person contact and both access for medications, but also for um, therapy appointments and, and making sure that telemedicine options are available. And, and uh, there was specific mention about Stowe and Johnson as being two communities where they're really trying to make sure that resources and supports are available. So I, I think that the, the takeaway that I've heard talking to all the partner organizations is encouraging people just to call, you know, that there are supports, there is support and our resources available, but to phone first, because there may just be a few extra steps, like asking some questions about your health and if you right. traveled recently. And so what everyone is saying is stay, you know, call us and contact us. Resources are available, but just check in first. Mm -hmm. yes. Linda, did you say get outside? That yes. what That's what they're saying in Massachusetts, right? Yeah, so any way we can get as much information, I think, on our site, blast it out, it's yeah. really going to be super, super, and one of the biggest ways that we can, you know, help well, the board. Well, that'd be a daily front porch forum. You always go back to front porch. But to the chat John Johnson dot com slash You should keep putting it up there for a yeah. while and help you know yeah. get it yeah. Especially what they are looking for. Yeah. That makes sense. I don't look at it and look at it twice. Yeah. I think we should definitely we'll have to work on that a little bit because our, our it's website a whole population that doesn't doesn't know if some people are forum even exist. And then yeah. there's the others that don't even have a computer. We're able to do a, uh, a model work now in, in house. It, it probably would be worth one blast to go out and just refer everybody hey, go to this the website page, that's where right. the latest updates yeah. are going to be. Uh, it's, it's reaching pretty yes. wide. Yeah. Last time, 1690. People like wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to think a lot of those are households. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. 1,600 addresses. Uh, individual uh, phone numbers. People. We only have 1,700 sites. 
Yeah. Not necessarily everybody lives in Vermont or Vermont in Johnson either. It's, it's getting them. There's some people that may have lived here prior that live in Cambridge but want to know about Johnson, but yeah. we're certainly grabbing a good bunch of them, that's for sure. There's a um I think it was here. Remember the Wi-Fi company, the Broadway company, they're offering free hotels. Yeah, they can take And isn't the library, can't you get Wi-Fi in the parking lot? You can, and you can get the Wi-Fi in the parking lot of this building, too. Okay, we should maybe put that up there. The library or the parking lot. Oh. That's where that state trooper's on was parked over the time. Yeah, that's it. He's always parked over there getting on the way. That's not what you told me. <laughs> what are you told me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Where's that mic? Yeah. Uh, the yeah. library. I pulled in there one day and said, Why are you all the yes. time? Are you picking up people? No. Oh, Get a Wi Fi, he says. Actually, Gene is uh, in contact with the principal. Basically, post, but a little Super more complicated. I don't believe so. Okay. In light of everything that we're dealing with right now, um, are there items in the rest of our agenda that we feel are must do's tonight, or does the board want to still go through everything? Greg? Is this afternoon? Quick public comment. Okay. Uh, I just want to express my appreciation for uh, the, the implicit and explicit bias screen that you all sponsored and coordinated. Um, or was that just last Saturday? All the way last uh, Saturday. Who Saturday did you go on? I can't, I can't keep track. It wasn't this past Saturday. It was Saturday before. Whatever it was, it was, it was wonderful and amazing. It's incredible to see uh, the turnout. I still am thinking, well, it, well this is. I'm still thinking about things that came out of that, uh, even if it was all the way two weeks ago. And uh, it was, you know, when I think about the 20 plus years I've been here in Johnson, there are many, many highlights, but I don't, I've been talking about the town meeting that we had where um, uh, Mike's suggestion and suggestions from others, you know, we came to an agreement on an inclusivity statement that was supported unanimously. It's absolutely one of the highlights of my time in Johnson. But that training was was right up there, and just really appreciate you all putting the time and, and making that a priority for our community. Um, and I'd also like to not just express share appreciation, but an offer um, that if it would be helpful, I think you know there's a lot to learn there, and at the end we got to practice a little bit. And it's that practice that's really important in terms of how things might actually change. And so one of the pieces of my work is is that. Sharing with folks restorative practices, which are just you know how when 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 someone uh, lets one of their biases kind of get the better of them, and they say or do something that they might not have intended, how do you get that resolved and and bring resolution between the people who are involved? Um, it's something that maybe a half hour or so would um, you know allow for enough time to actually get to practice it a little bit. But I'm just, I would be happy to um, share that with the group if you thought it might be um, helpful. But uh, again, just really appreciate uh, the, the variety of work that you all are going to take, put on the table as a select board. Um, very encouraging. So thank you all. Hey, I'd like to add to that. Um, I spoke to Bo Yang the next morning at the State House, actually Tuesday, and she was really impressed with the town. So great work. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I don't see if there are any comments from the. Um, 
I'm sorry, I just wanted to write up what Greg said that my hope and intention for, for um, is that we as a board want to continue these trainings every so often. I know it's not a priority right this second because we're dealing with this, but I think that we should continue to work with or or Greg or you know, whoever to continue having these conversations because I think it's important and very helpful for you. So I'm gathering that we're there is nothing else that we have to, to must do to tonight. No, I don't think so. I think everything else can okay. manage. Um and I'm I also we never took action on it, but uh, I'm my suggestion was we suspend any working meetings for the time being and then we uh at least for the next probably month or so, any meetings, uh, our regular meeting would only be must do items. Is that agreeable? Yeah. Agreeable, Doug? Yep. Okay. Any other items? You had something else? Oh, you said. I was wondering. Oh, buddy. Uh, I, I didn't say. Let's. We did them early, but anybody. Any, any comments from the uh, out there? In, uh, the internet, Zoom link. Zoom link. Thank you for setting this up. It was it was nice to not have to. <laughs> it was nice to be here and not there, but I still like to participate. Yeah, and I will I will echo that and say that um, I I have no more comments from the peanut gallery. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this I, is really great. Very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, Shane Spent, uh, I, I also agree, and I wanted to offer a, uh, a better quality microphone for the next one, if that's, uh, <laughs> that's needed. Okay. Yeah. But thank you very much for setting it up. Yeah, thank you. Okay, if there's no other business, we see you in adjourn.